here now, here we are. Okay. So I hear uh, that the uh, the war in Ukraine is a disaster and that uh, we have no stake in this war. Neither do the Ukrainians anymore. So what's to be done? Well, I find I'm, I'm, you know, I have, I've really been limiting my tongue on the war for a while, and I'm not going to say everything I think right now, Abraham, but I would say this. If you are getting arms from somebody else, and you are dying and getting getting your ass kicked, mm. and you are carrying out atrocities yourself, the war is just the war is just lowering your own your own moral standards. At this at this point, first of all, first of all, if this were really a war, Ukraine wouldn't exist. Mm. Russia could destroy Ukraine. They could they could they could do it very easily. They've been fighting this war one hand behind their back. They don't want to have a lot of collateral damage. They've done a pretty good job of not doing that, I think. Um, they have to maintain some kind of international posture. See, they're they're different than the United States. The United States is a banded country. It's a country based on lying, stealing, mass murder, profiteering racism okay there's nothing the united states there's no treaty the united states has ever signed that was worth the ink that it was signed with and that starts from the native people huh. so therefore the united states now this is a hard, hard statement to say the validity of any united states participation in any war has to be questioned because your history follows you and there's been no Truth and Reconciliation Commission or change in the U.S. position since its, since its inception. Instead of being a dog, a country of dogs, led, led, led by dogs, vampires, mm. and other kind of other kind of predator animals. Mm. Yeah. So that, that's my view. So to me, when Zelensky comes here begging for some arms, there have not been demonstrations against him. That's disgraceful. Mm. The man's a racist to his heart. He's a he he's a chauvinist to his heart. Mm. He has all this anti-Russian propaganda used by the by the Ukrainian uh, um, nationalists of World War II era to uh, motivate his fight for power. That's all it's about for me. A fight for power for him. Mm. All the money he's getting, all the guns he's getting. Are simply are really the guns are really being used by the U.S. armed industry to prove how well their weapons work. Mm. Because when they have war, when they have war um, arms sales conventions in the Middle East or Europe, they'll use these the, the war. All arms manufacturers use war to test their test their goods to sell to other countries. Okay. But who was Zelensky to come in to demand anything? I mean, I mean, you're demanding something. And I think somebody tried to shut him up. I think he actually was, um, Republicans kind of censured him a little bit coming to the United States this time. He, had, he, he, he met with a joint House of Congress last year, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. They, gave him some, they gave him some missiles they said they weren't going to give him. Mm. But right, yeah, they did. They, they, they weren't going to give these, these attack missiles, mm -hmm. and they changed it. But I'm just going to say this. If I were, I'm not a Russian military leader. I'm not a Russian politician. But maybe they need to take the gloves off and end this war quickly. Because the longer it runs out, Ukraine's not going to win the war. They don't have enough. They don't have enough soldiers. They can't. They can't even recruit enough soldiers. Russia has three hundred thousand, half a million soldiers in reserve being trained. Hmm. I mean, the United States still has its money. They still took the people of Russia's money. They seized their. They seized their money in banks. Hmm. 
So if the war should teach you anything, is if you could, if you even think that you're gonna throw down with the United States in some way, secure your money. Hmm. If you can, if you cannot, they'll seize your money. Hmm. Now I don't know what these boys in Iran was doing before. I think four U.S. spies were released a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they got billions of dollars the U.S. gave them. So they were really must have been very valuable. Mm. They had to have been. Mm. Because the United States has to give up money too easily that they steal from other countries. They always keep it. Mm. Yeah. They, they keep the money. Yeah. So all I'm saying is if, you, if you're going to have a fight with the U.S., seize your money and, and make sure you destroy their proxy as soon as possible. Don't I? I'm not saying wipe out civilians. No, 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 no. But do whatever you can to end it quickly. Mm. The longer you fight, they'll get more weapons to to have more long range, long range um, targets. Who is to say they want to attack your your aerospace industry headquarters? Who is the city won't do it? Who I'm not saying. Mm. The longer you hang around with them the bolder they get. Even when they're losing, they can't win the man-to-man -man war. Mm -hmm. the, the offensive is a failure. But don't let them get any victories. Sometimes you just have to either win we're, we're a war of attrition, which I think is what they're doing. Whatever they got to do. Ukraine, the people of Ukraine, if you stand up and say down with the war, if they kill all of you, they can't fight. They can't kill all of you. They, they got to have somebody to fight. At this point, there's so, so many people in the graves. So many people have been injured. So many sons, fathers, uncles, cousins, friends are dead. What I hear is that as soon as we're later, the, the, soldiers, the soldiers are going to start, start the mutiny. That's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. If this continues, mm -hmm. so I'm concerned you should go hurry, hurry, mutiny, and, and get, get, you know get over with. Mm -hmm. And maybe, and maybe the Russians should start promoting that in in their in their propaganda to Ukrainian soldiers. Yeah, it's time to quit. Yeah, that might be the best bet. If they can't, if they, if whatever reason they don't want to take it to them militarily, maybe some soft power and some propaganda, or a combination of both. Because they have the upper hand is that they have not mistreated Ukrainian soldiers. When Russians take them captive, they do not retreat, mistreat them. Ukraine mistreat them all the time. Ukraine mistreat Russian soldiers all the time. There's a, there was a uh, picture on the internet a month ago, maybe not even a month ago, of a Russian soldier. He was surrounded. He wanted to surrender. He took off his helmet, put down his weapons, put down a bulletproof vest. And assume the position, and the Ukrainians just killed him. Just wiped, wiped him out. So there are tons of videos out there which show the Ukrainians committed mass murder, where there are no videos of Russians doing that. So the Russians have the upper hand as far as telling people to surrender. Hmm. I'm just saying, I hope whatever the combination they do, this whole thing needs to end. Because the United States, Zelensky will not negotiate. So they, they may get rid of him too. You never know. Mm. By one way by one way or another. Yeah. Plane plane wreck, poisoning, um, divorce, messy divorce. Well, you know, but the United States, I do think, wants to end the war before get it out of get it out of the media because the elections are coming up. It's not an election issue. Republicans are kicking their ass. They're not winning the war. They're not winning. Mm. Biden looks like shit in public. So they got to get rid of the war. Yeah. So in the, do, do what you can to bring it to a close, Russia, in the sense of use your soft power and hard power to convince the Ukrainian masses it's in their interest to stop fighting. If they don't fight, they can't, they can't kill them all.
They can't, no, they can't kill all the soldiers. The Ukrainian army cannot kill all the, its own soldiers. <laughs> Even if they put them all up a firing squad, that will cause a mass uprising in Ukraine because not going to see the husbands and, husbands and sons murdered because they, 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 they refuse to fight. Mm-hmm. Um, that a lot of people have been replaced in, in the military. Even the American transgender woman who is such a vicious hawk, mm-hmm. she's, she's, she's gone too. Mm-hmm. So something's going on. Mm-hmm. So they're going in Ukraine, and we'll just see how long this is going to continue. Um, on an- another front, uh, it seems that Armenia and uh, the apparent col- color revolution that occurred there a few years ago has now capitulated to uh, Azerbaijan and the Armenian enclave of uh, Na, na, Nagorno Karabakh is going to be surrendered to to uh, uh, Azerbaijan, mm-hmm. and we'll see if the overtures toward the West by the Armenian government will uh, continue. Mm-hmm. I I I wouldn't be surprised, um, but one day we'll talk about my views on that part of the world too. I I, I have a few things to say about some things going on there that people might might be surprised that I even know about. But that's it for me right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, you touched on uh, one of the aspects which is uh, never discussed in the media, and that is the accounting, you know, of this Ukraine war. But it's, from the bits of information that I have gleaned, it seems like the um, gold reserves of Russia uh, placed in the various Western banks has been confiscated, looted, and it's being used basically, you know, to finance this war. Now, the United States is, uh, you know, uh, you know, spending all this money on arms, and the money goes, you know, to the American arms uh, manufacturers, you know, the military industrial right. complex, right? right? Okay, but you know, they put it on the tab, you know, the Ukraine, you know, the you know, the United States is, you know, like. You know, has has this you know scheme going? You know, in which they're going to expect Ukraine to pay back the money that is being spent on the war. How? How do I pay it back? They ain't got no money. I saw this. You know, like I couldn't believe. You know, the United States is going to expect Ukraine. You know, to pay pay back all this money. You know, like how could they possibly do so? You know, like they'd have to sell off everything in the country. You know, like the whole country just be, you know, sold off in exchange. You know, for the national debt. You know, in this war. It's so pointless, well, you know, if they're going for independence, you know, like, why are they doing this? You know, it must be well, for theological okay. reasons, you know, uh, because, you know, in terms of accounting and in terms of, you know, human lives of the Ukrainians themselves, you know, like, this is not working. And yet they're going ahead with it. They're continuing on and on. So, I mean, well, Russia is sort of, you know, dropping a hint here and there, you know, that the Ukrainian soldiers, you know, should get rid of this mess themselves yeah. and take control of their own country. Well, that's that's, that's, a, very, that's a very good message because they, they aren't even having elections. Oh, it's so expensive to have an election right now. We're in war. Uh-huh. And yeah. that would be nice if they didn't have elections because of, because of war. Man, that'd be it. What? No elections? We, oh, we have it two years. Yeah, right. Okay. So the, uh-huh. the point is, you know, they're... I mean, that's how much the dictatorship they're having now. They're even canceling. Russia just had an election a few months ago, a few weeks ago. They had their elect, local election. But Ukraine won't even have elections, and they outlaw the opposition. So yeah. it's, 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 it's nothing but a sham. And, you know, really, really, it's really just a, yeah. a shit show. Yeah. It's really just a shit show right now yeah. to me. Well, you know, Donbass had elections during the war. You know, since 2014, they had they had elections. 2014, they had another uh, election. Uh, I think in uh, I can't remember. 2022. Yeah, 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, they've had elections. You know, and I mean, you, you, yeah, a real you know a com- complete election should include all the refugees. You know, that have left. You know, for other parts. You know, in the meantime. Right. I don't think Ukraine, you know, would uh, would be willing to do so. You know, they wouldn't, you know, let all the Ukrainian refugees, you know, in uh, Poland and in Germany and in Canada, you know, like have a vote, you know, because they might not vote the right way. You know, like <laughs> you, know, that's, you know what? That's something that nobody has said. You may have hit the nail on the head. You may have hit the nail right there on the head that the refugee 
the refugee vote may be what they are fearing the most. Because the domestic vote will be cramped because the opposition has been it has been made illegal. Yeah. But the refugee vote would not be illegal. They can do anything they want. Yeah. They can't anybody looking over their shoulders. No, because they're another country. And if, even, even if they have a spy network, it is not like the Savak in Iran during during the Shah. No, it ain't like that. No, no, no. That's a very good point. So much. We should talk about that more. That actually might be what, what they're scared of. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good point. Yeah. Huh. Now, Russia, what's Russia going to do? I mean, uh, you know, the only talk I've heard of, you know, a Russian offensive in the Donbass, you know, to uh, take uh, the rest of the territory that's missing from the Donetsk and Lugansk, you know, people's autonomous republics. <clears throat> That's supposed to be coming in in the springtime, but you know, Russian soldiers, you know, if they're trained to fight in the wintertime, you know, there's no reason why they couldn't do it in the yeah, no. wintertime while the Russians they are, they are, like they are, they are trained, they are trained to fight in wintertime. They are trained to fight in wintertime. They are. Yeah. So we'll just see, we'll just see what, what happens. Supposedly they're ready for the offensive. And I think that that the soft using soft and using military and soft power. They should get some results, mm -hmm. and Ukrainian soldiers, Ukrainian soldiers need this mutiny, lay down their arms, surrender, and that's it. Yeah. At this point, if they just refuse to fight, some of, now there may be somebody in the battalions that they'll have to neutralize who who who, who will shoot them in the back. Yeah. That unfortunately might happen. They may have to take some people out who are who are going to refuse to surrender. But in general, I think that is their best bet. Yeah, because if you're not fighting, the Russians will not kill you. Your Ukrainians might kill you trying to surrender. Yeah, but the Russians at the moment, they won't kill you. Yeah. Now they won't, now Ukrainians may bomb the prison war camps. They they have done that. They have done that. But that's 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 the savagery that makes up the Ukrainian army. You're I'm right. Sorry. It could turn into a civil war in Ukraine. You know, if the uh, the uh, Nazi <laughs> battalions don't want to stop fighting. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, then, and you know, uh, yeah, I mean, yes, they yes, would have to and, be, they would have to be put down, you know, like you know, if they're going to start attacking yeah, right. other Ukrainians for for being anti-war, you know, then then the war is coming home. That's it. That's all. Well, that's that's something else we haven't talked about, but I do think that um, the possibility of Azov style, the Azov leaders waging a war against any government that would seek peace through the United States with Russia, there is a possibility that they would go to war. You're right. Mm. It is, it is, a, it is a possibility. So therefore, who would fight them? Mm. Somebody has to fight them because that that the government itself would then be under attack by the Azovs. And so they 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 would have to consolidate their loyal troops. Mm. Think, you know, I mean, because if if I'm, sh I, I can't say I'm sure, but you would you would think that this would be part of the calculus of the new defense ministry. If if we get a peace plan, and if there's no unity among all the troops, what are we going to do? Because mm. some because some of my troops are kind of rabid. Yeah, in the sense of you know they're they're rabid. So they may have to they may have to go to war with them, they may have to try and jail them, they they may have to they may have to neutralize them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They may have to neutralize them mm -hmm. militarily. They may have to just wipe them out. Yeah. Because if they want this deal, because what you just said is very important, Abraham. If the whole Ukrainian nation is on hock, it's time for a revolution in Ukraine. Yeah. Because you can't make us pay any money, we ain't gonna pay you. Yeah. I don't care what we signed. That was the old government. I mean, yeah. actually, this actually might be the time to talk about that. A real people people's revolution in, in Ukraine. It's Look possible. what your leaders have done. It's yeah. possible because the whole nation is, it has been hot yeah. for its military aid. Yeah. Plus, there's the whole strategic defeat that they just. Uh... Uh, are subjected to you know because Poland has cut off the, uh, the uh, supply of I'm arms worried. that you know were the were, how were the arms getting into uh, Ukraine they were getting into the Ukraine by way of Poland okay 
See, Poland has see. cut off, you know, any transfer of of weapons now. Plus, Whoa. yeah, plus they refuse to accept any importation of Ukrainian grain because it's, you know, being sold at a at a at, at a loss, you know, to undercut, you know, the uh, Polish farmers, and the Polish government is going into election next month. So they have sure to are. show of, you know, nationalist fervor by saying that they're favoring, you know, the Polish farmer over the Ukrainian farmer now, you know, in terms of the sale of grain. <laughs> okay. So Ukraine is cut off from importations and the most important exportation now, you know, so, you know, this is time for Ukraine to reconsider, you know, their whole, you know, strategic approach because it's just been destroyed by Poland. Not, not even by Russia, you know, you know, Poland has done it, you know, their staunchest ally has now, you know, cut them off. They have no feet left. I don't know where they're going to go, but it's not. Well, you know, that's usually, usually that's what weakens you the worst is when your ally stabs you in the back. Yeah. Not your friend, not your friend. I mean, not your enemy. You expect your enemy to stab you in the back. Mm hmm what what needs to happen really be quite frank with you is a secret delegation going to russia negotiating a peace overthrowing zelensky establishing a neutral government mm. that's probably their only hope yeah because they can they can make amends with russia i mean a different leadership and it may be hard to find that leadership in ukraine it may come from a diaspora <clears throat> the uh you know the um uh, we are the what are the what do they call those governments the government in exile they base it in you know they base it in france or some shit you know how, how they do this mm. we're the government of exile of so-and-so land and we are based in this mountain and we we call for the ukrainians da, 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 da. It's a, you know, that shit. they do it all the time mm. you know and that i mean there may be that approach and that, that approach might happen too from people in in the diaspora, yeah. you never know, yeah. because they are in Western countries, yeah. and they are in Russia, and they are in Russia. Yeah, well, the Ukrainian fascist forces have uh, long been organized, you know, especially here in Canada, even subsidized by public yeah. funds, you know, for cultural pursuits, supposedly. But, mm. you know, although it's, you know, so difficult for Ukrainians to organize within Russia, within the Ukraine, you know, because of the repression there, uh, the uh, Ukrainian diaspora you know, as you say, you know, is is free to do so. You know, they could organize, you know, their own revolutionary movements now. They are free to do. They are free. To, they have so much freedom to do so. Yeah. There's so much freedom to do so. Yeah. So they it's, organize it, themselves, mean, and they, you know, <laughs> collect support, you know, for their for their allies within Ukraine, and then they come back to the Ukraine all organized. Well, then they can just take over the country. Yeah. They can take, they can take over. Yeah. They, they can take over. And actually, unfortunately, or fortunately, because they're in the West, they can play dual dual revolutionary dual revolutionary tactics, making the West think that they really want to have a pro-Western government, but we know we gotta do something here. So why, why, <laughs> why, why, so, <laughs> I.e. 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 Fidel Castro. We want we want friends with the West. We gotta get rid of dictatorship. Why do you help us? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I do look at history. Yeah. We history, but oh, we play this line. You have to work right. You know, and bring a few scientists, some technocrats. You know, and shake hands behind the scenes with and tell Victoria Newland and big chicks all over and they go to fuck to hell. Talk, talk to somebody else. And just you know, we can freeze yeah. the conflict. You yeah. you can take take arm all the arms you want for the United States. Just don't use them. Yeah. You yeah, even, if they, we, even if they do start something, you know, of an opposition in the in the diaspora, and even if it's you know starts off as being pro Western, you know, once they start something, you know, the people on the ground, you know, are not going to sort of you know just you know listen to every word. You know, they're just going. They're going to pick it up. You know, they can go with go with it, you know, on their own, on their own basis, you know, they're not going to sort of, you know, you know, allow uh, a U.S. military base to be installed in Ukraine, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> and I, I bet you that's one of the plans they have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
It has to be a plan they have. Yeah. You know, it it's intimidation. They want to surround the USSR, surround the China, uh, and uh, make it, <clears throat> you know, the military balance of forces, you know, such that they can dictate to Russia and China what to do, you know, because otherwise, you know, the consequences would be too severe. That's, you know, the strategy. They don't, you know, I don't think the United States wants an overt war. It's like a shadow war that they're waging on both Russia and China. Well, I mean, what they better hope is they never get a government in Mexico or, you know, Panama or Puerto Rico Cuba or anybody that'll say, hey, you know what? We want independence. We're, we're just taking independence. Yeah. If part of independence, we get the arms from China and I'm, we're going to set a battery right here. You can here, we'll just fuck you up. Yeah. If that ever was to happen, that would change. It was, oh my, what are we going to do now? They have to either destroy Puerto Rico, destroy, you know, they have to do something just outlandish. They couldn't cut off their, their electricity. And I'm, hopefully they've seized their own money, put their money in the in the BRICS bank in Brazil. So they can't get the BRICS bank money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put your money. I keep telling you, put your money somewhere else. But, you know, as far as the United States is concerned in all this, you know, they're spending so much money and... You know, like, and it's causing inflationary crisis, and uh, man, it's I mean, causing it, it, all sorts of consequences to this. You know, but, but you know, how does the United States think they can get away with this? You know, like financially. So it they struck don't. me yeah. when I heard that the United States has nine thousand tons of gold stashed away. Okay, so that's uh -huh. you know, so there's a three thirty three trillion dollar debt of the United States. Yeah, to the. Uh, I don't know, to to the Fed, you know, or whatever, you know. But the reason why it's not being called in is because the United States does have this collateral. That's why the United States hasn't collapsed under this debt load. But uh, but that's what's keeping it going so far. Uh, but whether or not the the uh, the inflationary uh, cost is going to kill the economy. That's the question. Well, I, I think that, let me tell you what's going on here too. You know, they have this UAW, the, the, the United Auto Workers are on strike. And I think right now in your country, the Unifor is in the process of selling out the you know, the a fourth. Um, um, but but As they, okay, there's a fake solution to emissions by creating electronic vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's a move for profitability of a new type of, of a new type of product to sell. And Tesla right now is leading that market, or at least in the United States, Tesla and some companies in China. Yeah. But all the people they'll have to lay off because the production of the car is different than that of the in internal combustion engine. Mm. With the creation of this electronic vehicle market, it's going to create mass unemployment. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to have the domino effect, you know, because if all the auto workers are not out there spending money, then, you know, the companies cannot sell, you know, what they're making. And so they're going to close. And then else, yeah, I'm, I'm saying that I'm saying that to say two things. One, we should not believe that the intent of the electronic vehicle is the end pollution. Oh, it's being made in China in any case, you know. And, and the Chinese electric car companies, you know, are more advanced than Tesla now, and less expensive as well. So, you know, like the whole, and right. also the automotive uh, industry in Germany is going downhill too. Yeah, oh, well, all Germany, these vehicles oh. are, you know, you know, yeah. they're supposed to be, you know, banned by 1935, you know, so you, you can't buy a vehicle now that you expect to last more than 10 years, you know, you know, so people usually buy a vehicle, you know, with the resale value in mind, you know, thinking they're going to get their money back. They won't get their money back because the vehicle cannot be sold, well, you know. That's it. I, 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 you know, you made you made a very good point here, and I guess I'm a little bit. I, I consider myself maybe reactionary 
reactionary on this point. But why is it that people who have cars, and what I'm saying is if the if the EVs will have a detrimental impact on employment, which is going to have, why, and this is gonna sound very reactionary, why shouldn't there be a movement against EVs or against law against laws? that say they'd be outlawed. Because why do I have to buy another car? I mean, why? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm against, I'm for, I'm, I'm for pollution. Don't, don't get me wrong. Hmm. But it's because you want me to buy another car. Because you want, because you want to make some money. Mm-hmm. And you're saying that, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I think that's something I probably need, need, need to think through better. Yeah, but I don't, I don't intend to buy another car just because you told me to buy one. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I intend to have a car to drive. If, I, if I'm gonna, if I'm in a place where I have to have a car, then I need to have a car. I don't live in a community where we can walk everywhere. If that's the case. I would need a car. Yeah. So they're making us. They're making us use driverless cars. They're making us use electronic vehicles. Driverless cars don't have a driver. Okay, electronic vehicles have electronic vehicles have less people in, in in a production plan. So I do think that people in these in industrialized countries or activists in industrialized countries need to really consider what's what is the plan here. Like you said, what's the plan? Mm-hmm. Because people won't have the money to buy the electric vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, a laid-off auto worker is not going to buy an electric car. No way. Yeah. But you know, electric car itself, you know, like is 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 totally out of it. You know, because it's a waste of resources, and uh, you know, could and you know, the better transportation system, of course, would be free public transit, free tra- public tra- uh, transit. Here, here, we call it uh, transpo. Yeah, free public transit. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, with with. Uh, the minibuses going down side streets as well, like they have in Europe, uh, you know, all, right. you know, complete, you know, like a public transit system, you know, that's for free. Then we wouldn't need any cars anymore, you know, like, so, uh, you know, that in order to, for the bulk of the people to survive, you know, economically, that's what's going to uh, take, you know, free public transit, you know, not a car, not an electric car. Uh, and, and to produce, you know, electric car takes, you know, so much, you know, so much in terms of you know energy in the first place you know that it it defeats its own purpose you know because if you're trying to avoid you know using you know uh uh um carbon carbon uh fuel uh well you know like it's still being used in order to make you know the the thing you know produced in the first place and in china they're even using you know brown coal for energy source because you know they're maintaining the accelerated you know industrialization process there, which is so self defeating. You know, Peking, Beijing, you know, is uh, under smog. You know, so much of the year, you know, people are are suffering as a result. You know, of this um, needless, uh, you know, capitalist industrialization that China's into. It's it's uh, you know like they're very proud of themselves for doing so. You know, but you know like it's it's uh, still self defeating. As far as the population is concerned, so you know, like, uh, but you know, they're so incapable. Even the social democrats, you know, are incapable of coming up with any sort of you know significant reforms. You know, the New Democratic Party here in Canada, you don't hear anything from them about you know climate crisis, nothing about you know like uh, uh, public transport system, nothing at all. When I was a candidate for the Green Party here. You know, I, I ran on a free, pl- free public transport. And it's, uh, you know, like, you know, people say, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, you know, but, you know, people didn't hook into it. You know, they t- sort of didn't realize, you know, this is not just, you know, a good idea. It's something that they have to have. You know, there's got to be this element of compulsion. And the crisis hasn't hit hard enough yet for people to realize that they have to, that they're under compulsion to change everything. That feeling has not yet arose, arisen, and, and it will arise. 
they will but, arise. That's true. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, this, the uh, inflationary cycle is going to do it, you know, like right now the labor movement is going to have to move, you know, in, in, into fighting for you know, what's called a COLA clause, uh, cost of living allowance. There has to be a COLA clause in every union contract. If not, then, you know, all, all these workers are going to be working for nothing because all of their wages, you know, are going to be worth nothing, you know, with inflation. So, you know, they have to have a COLA clause. And, you know, this is going to uh, 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 decline you know, the level of profitability of all the American corporations. Uh, and uh, they probably would not survive, you know, a COLA clause. So, you know, we're moving towards, you know, some kind of a, you know, like uh, end point. You know, it's difficult to say, you know, what's going to be happening exactly, but, you know, there has to be an end point to this. You know, it cannot go on and on, you know, like what is it the United States has has served up, you know, in the Ukraine war so far? Uh, 60, 75 billion dollars. Canada's just, you know, offered another half a billion dollars. In Europe, you know, I think also did, you know, something like a hundred billion dollars. You know, like who's going to pay for this ultimately? You know, working people are not going to want to pay for this war especially after it's lost, you know, like paying for a lost war. Well, that's the worst thing possible. You know, like, you know, if they, if, you know, paying, paying for, you know, a winning war that can be sold, you know, but paying for a losing war, no, that can't be sold. You're right about that. Yeah. So okay. We don't have that? much time yet. So uh, oh. good to speak with you again this week, Steve, you know, and, uh, I'll see you again next week, and uh, we'll take this whole system apart piece by piece.